Throughout centuries, mankind have witnessed many battles. Battles in the air, on the sea, in foreign nations. There can even be a battle in your home or even have one with yourself. Now, when you ask yourself this question, why would anybody want to attack and destroy the church? Not just a, an ordinary building, but the body of believers. Well, you gotta look at what happened over 5,000 years ago, that there was an ancient prophecy by God himself that spoke concerning the enemy, that his head is gonna be crushed. Now, that's one thing to get your finger crushed, your foot crushed, but when it comes to your head, in biblical terminology, the head represents an authoritative position. That means that all you own, your, your structure, your domain, your kingdom is going to be completely wiped out, or at least destroyed, collapsed. Now, why would anybody want that to happen? And also, there is no coming back from it either. Like, there is no such thing as a recovery, especially when it comes to a spiritual entity. Now, when did this happen? This happened at the time of Jesus' death, exactly at that very moment. Uh, and pictures and movies and magazines, cartoon figures, you may, it may seem like it's not much, but in actuality, that's a gruesome spot that has ever existed in mankind's history. At that moment, that prophecy has been fulfilled. But it was also the start of the birth of the church. Just as your mom gave birth to you, her womb was open and outpours blood and fluids. The same with Jesus. Out from his side that was open, outpours water and blood. So we are considered to be sons and daughters spiritually by what Jesus did on the cross. It's not by our works, it's not by our power nor our strength, but it's by his spirit, it's by his will. The enemy tried to kill Jesus before the cross, but couldn't succeed. Jesus first had to be raised up. Satan is a great deceiver. After 600 years after Christ's ascension, Satan formulated and produced a traditional lie that has been passed down for over 1400 years. Over 1.5 billion people still believe this lie. To my Muslim brothers and sisters, I love you. But Muslims believe that Jesus did not die on the cross, but before his death, God simply took him up to heaven. Now we know that in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 it says that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sin. So if you believe that Jesus did not die on the cross, shed his blood for me and you, then that means that you are still in your sin and you will have to pay for your sins. And that is eternal punishment in hell, something that Jesus has already covered you from. Be not deceived, my brothers and sisters. Now there's also another attack against the church. And sometimes that attack is actually from within. You know, the, the hypocrisy, the judgmental comments, the criticism, those are attacks from within the church. And by that happening, people who are in the church actually leaves out of it because they don't want no part of it. That's another form of attack. There's also another purple attack um, by the atheist community. Uh, atheism, it comes from the Greek word atheos, which means no God. Um, them dealing with the empirical evidence and to show that there is no God or that Christ didn't exist, or looking at historical documents and timelines and even evolutionary research, uh, specifically Charles Darwin and uh, Big Bang Theory. Again, that's another form of attack against the church, is to weed people away from the belief of God and to completely just deny the faith. And also there's another attack against the church. I mean, this, this attack's been going on for thousands of years. Um, a physical attack against the church. You know, one of the first times I heard about this attack against the church, or in, in actuality, I thought it never exists. I thought it would never happen. But I remember hearing a story a couple years ago in Egypt. Um, there was a, a terrorist group and they would drag people out of the church and just kill them. I remember seeing pictures of heads Soldiers, they, they were just carrying these men's head, you know, and just, I was like, that's just so just devastating to even, like, look at. Um, even little kids just being shot right in front of their parents. In 64 AD, Christians were first and horribly persecuted by Emperor Nero. 
a colossal fire broke out at Rome, and Nero pointed the blame on Christians, and many were put to death. Coming to find out, surprisingly, that there is an all-Christian female protection force on the border of the country of Turkey and Syria. They protect their homeland from invading terrorist groups. As the angel approached to move the tomb out of its way, the Roman soldiers that was guarding the tomb fainted. In the presence of heavenly glory, in this physical body, it is too much for us. So the guards passed out. And as the guards woke up and noticed what happened, they told the chief priest everything. And the chief priest paid the Roman soldiers a good load of money to tell the governor that Jesus' disciples took his body at night. And that story has been commonly reported among Jews to this very day. It's well common that many Baptist ministers are black. And there is a lie that triggers individuals that they need a, a deep connection of their African roots. Because what happened in the Middle Passage simply removed their identity. So they may even find themselves going into their history, into the occult, witchcraft, and turning from their faith, and even disputing with other black Christians about the white man's religion that was forced upon them when they landed here in America. Now there's two things that I want to discuss briefly. Number one, it is nothing wrong looking at your generational heritage, but it is a problem when you are leaving the faith. Number two, Christianity is not a white man's religion. It's not. It started in the Middle East and it spread across two continents, Africa and Europe. And from there, it made a global impact for over 2,000 years and it's still growing to this very day. Now there's a verse in the scripture that gets my attention every time I read it. 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, it says, They left us. However, they were never really a part of us. If they had been, they would have stayed with us. But by their leaving made it clear that none of them were a part of us. And so I say again, it's nothing wrong looking at your past. It never is. Many of us do it. It is not just to connect with our roots, but it's to be encouraged to know who we are as a people, whether if it's a tribe or a art can be a part of a culture that you want to get familiarized with. But leaving your faith is another thing. Never be influenced by someone's opinion telling you to go back and reach to the religion that was once lost in your life or that your ancestors had. For many gods were worshipped, even in Asia, Europe, and African countries alike. But we have one God who really loves us. And it's best for us not to leave his side, neither give up on our faith. We must encourage one another to stay on the right path. And if someone falls, we lift them up with love, with, by being gentle and patient, and keep praying for them. And soon enough, their eyes will be open. Because at one point in time in our life, we also have failed ones, or even lost our way. But there is always someone or the Spirit of God to lift us up out of the dirt of destruction and to bring us back on that right path where we belong. And here's a verse in particular that speaks about love and evil. The reason love will grow cold is because of the increase of evil. And your love should never grow cold, despite of your circumstances or what's around you. Examine yourself and it should never stop. Your love shall always grow. Back in the 70s and the 80s, there was such a rise in these prophetic voices, and Billy Graham was even one of them, uh, including many others. What I'm about to share with you is, is real, uh, is not made up, and you know, why would anybody want to do such a thing? Billy Graham knew in his spirit that something was going to happen to the body of Christ. And what was actually happening, this is actually coming from a witch. Um, well, who used to be a witch, that there was actually, they was going to form this sort of elite group and to actually kill 
the major prophets and evangelists, pastors that's, that was in this nation back in the 70s and the 80s. And Billy Graham knew in his spirit that something was going to happen. So he had his members and the church leaders and they prayed. And it didn't happen. But what did happen was such a... It was, it was, it was wrong. But to just, uh, for someone to just weed into the church and just corrupt the ministry, what the witches did is that they planted certain women in these churches just to bring down the ministers. And that's why back in those times, back in the 70s and 80s and 90s, there was such as this, there was a lot of uh, sex scandals that was in the church and their ministry would just, just collapse right before them. And so far, many of them just started, you know, writing magazines uh, uh, or having like church ministries that was just on TV. Uh, now it's, that was a wicked plan of the enemy. But then again, you gotta look at the source. It wasn't just the people. It wasn't the women, it wasn't the witches, it was the force behind it. And that's what you have to look at. The majority of attacks is not just people attacking you, but it's the spirit behind the person that's attacking you. Um, you look at disorders or disabilities, or even growing up, some sort of disease that they just have to be diagnosed with. All these are attacks of the enemy, and it's just to destroy people that's in the church. Not just in the building of a church or just a temple, but just a body of Christ. I have spoke about the physical attacks of the church. I spoke about the, um, the women, uh, Syrian women that, that are armed Christians, and they would take out anybody that comes as a, that, that poses as a threat against their village. Talked about the, the atheism uh, community that's verbally attacking the church, even criticism from uh, fellow believers. I just pray that people will be smart enough to understand the truth and not to be deceived by intellectual individuals. You know, there's nothing wrong listening to somebody, but then again, you need to know the truth for yourself. I stress that out often on here, and even with people that I know personally, you need to read the scriptures, take time with God and just ask him questions. Let him lead you. Don't be a follower of man. It's okay to be influenced by them in, in all sorts of positive aspects in your life. It's nothing wrong being inspired by them or motivated by them, but don't be them. Don't follow them. You, know, you have one Lord. We have many gifts, but we serve one purpose. So I hope this message was encouraging to you, and God bless you all, brothers and sisters. I want you to take care of yourself, and I really mean that. I love you all. Bye.